Thank you, Lord. Forever and ever, yes. My heart leaps for you. Hallelujah. As the deep pants after the waters. My soul longs for you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise for you. It's another beautiful day yes. in the presence of the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for all he's been doing for us. Thank you, Jesus. We want to give God praise for his mercies, thank you, Lord. his preservation. Oh, Lord. Thank all you. through the week, the Lord has been faithful. Yes. Just, just the way he has been doing it over the years. His faithfulness has never failed. Never. And I know that in your life, he has been faithful. Yes. So I welcome you yet to another episode in Activating Power Prayers. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Amen. And here with me, I'm not alone today. <laughs> I have here with me, Minister Eva. Can you greet us? Yes. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> God bless you, people of mm, God. Come it's on. yet another beautiful and blessed day. The Lord has given us the opportunity of this day yes. to go forth in, in the power and might that he has given us to go and fulfill destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank bless you, Jesus. Jesus. We give God precious Minister Eva one of the ministers in our church and the lord has been you know we've been doing the groundwork clearing the ground and getting ready we came into this land and we are seeing there is a strong man here and the bible says you don't just take goods unless you first of all bind the strong man we have been doing the binding and we have been doing the work and i know the increase is coming yes. the land will hear hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah and we give god praise there are Amen. people whose heart is burning for Amen. what god has to do in this generation and god is blessing us with men and women like that yes. and we give god all the praise all hallelujah the praise. we continue today throughout the week we have been handling the power of knowing god power of knowing god. from monday tuesday wednesday the lord began to deal and yesterday he dealt something about our trials we began to see the understanding that sometimes that we don't know that makes some of us come to a place we are confused some of us are angry with god you know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been there? You have asked God questions. Why is my prayer not being answered? Why have you let me in the dark? After all my faithfulness, we saw last yesterday. If you missed it, please go back there and look at it again. And I tell you that some of the answers you have been looking for will be answered in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we continue. Today is the grand finale of this week of knowing God. The power of knowing God. Amen. Amen. And we're going to read the book of Luke 22, am I correct? Yes. And verse 42 to 44. Go ahead and read. Luke chapter 22, yes. verse 42 to 44. Mm -hmm. And I read in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture says, saying, Father, saying, mm -hmm. if it is your will, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Mm. Nevertheless, mm -hmm. not my will, not but my yours will, be done. But yours. Be then gone. an angel appeared to him from heaven, hey. strengthening him. Strengthening him. And being him. in agony, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. He prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood. Wow! Falling down to the ground. Wow! Hallelujah. What a prayer! That is a desperate prayer. And I tell you out there that if praying is what we just say you know you say prayer no i'm talking about the dimension of prayer he prayed until he was sweating so most of us will pray and sweat you know but this is another dimension that he was praying and he was sweating and then the sweat is not just a sweat it's not just the sweat no he, the bible said he was sweating and the sweat we are like great drops of blood so instead of seeing the sweat like you know sometimes you are seeing blood that was the agony in the place of prayer that was the description of the desperateness of that situation you know but there's something that is very striking there he said that he prayed from that 42 you know he said something before that place he has been with his disciples. Yesterday, we look at the time that he came the first time to them. He went back to pray again. He came back the second time. That second time, the Bible said he repeated the words again. Even the third time, he prayed and said, Father, let this cup pass by me. But when he came to the place of understanding, I said, Lord, now I know that it's not as if you want to change this situation for me. Now let your will be done. That was the kind of faith we saw in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they said, we know our God. Our God can do all things. But if he chooses not to change this situation, and that is the point every servant of God,
God every child of God must come to. Because sometimes we insist on having things our way. And you know what? The Bible says your ways are not my ways. Your thinking is not my thinking. And in fact, to compare our thinking and God's thinking, he says as far away as the earth is from the heavens, that is how our ways and our thoughts are far away. So for us to really begin to understand what God is working out in situations, we need to be in the place of prayer. When we begin to perceive what God is doing, and I tell you something, he's in the place of prayer that you receive something. If you read the book of John chapter 18, we don't have time to go into that, but we read the book of John chapter 18. 18 the bible told us something from verse 4 you can read it for yourself i tell you something the bible says that after he has made up his mind to submit to the will of god and then he saw that the those that are coming to arrest him has come we were told that judas was the one that betrayed him other accounts told us that when he came he just came to him and said hey oh master and he kissed him you know he, he jesus asked him did you come to betray the the son of man with a kiss you know every other translation matthew talked about it yes mark talked about it, but there is something about john the way he described that thing it was so dramatic you know he said something he was right there the bible says that by the time they came jesus rose from the place of prayer i can imagine the sweat like drops of blood all over him and those people has come to arrest him the bible says that when they came they, he asked them who are you looking for and they said jesus of nazareth read it for yourself in luke 18 verse 4 the bible says and when he told them I am the one you are looking for. The Bible says they went backward and they fell to the ground. You know what? When we yield to situations, it's not because we are not stronger than that situation. It is because we, there is something called the hour of darkness. There is something called the, the time for darkness to come and try. That was why Jesus said that the prince of this world does what? Comet and has nothing in me. When he comes, he has nothing. So there is a time he comes periodically. And then at the times we begin to complain. Lord, I've been faithful. Why is this thing happening to me? We handled those details yesterday. Today we are looking at the topic. The power of knowing God and the ministry of angels. The power of knowing God and the ministry Hallelujah. of angels. We read in that place. The Bible told us that after he has said, if this cup will not pass by me. Can you read it again? Verse 43 of Luke 22. Verse 43, it reads, yes. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven. An angel appeared to him from heaven. Strengthening him. And was strengthening him. Amen. An angel, one. Amen. Hallelujah. I was told you, in Jesus. the Bible how one singular angel, one, the Bible says that was the time the enemy was harassing the people of God. That was the time that King Hezekiah was reigning and Zenacherib and they, and, and, and they were coming to harass them and they wanted, you know, and the, when the Lord had a prayer of his people, just one angel, one, the Bible says, entered into the camp and one 185,000 soldiers were dead by the time it was warning. Just one angel. I tell you that when God fights, it doesn't fight for him. Just one angel. But in this situation, God says, I, I am not after all the demonstration of power. That angel came and began to strengthen him. Amen. Sometimes you need the strengthening of the Lord in that situation. Not just the intervention of the things. But today we are looking at the ministry of angels and understanding what? The power of God and the ministry of angels. So we read very clearly how it was that the angels came to strengthen him. As we go deeper into this, I want us to read the book of Psalm 103 verse 20. Please, can you help me read? Psalm 103 verse 20. Yes. It reads, Bless the Lord, you his angels. Bless the Lord, ye his angels. Who excel in strength. Who excel in strength. Who do his word. Who do his word. Hidden the voice of his word. Now note that. Amen. Hidden the voice. The voice. Of the word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I read my own. He said, Bless the Lord, he oh, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength. That do his commandments. So we understand that angels, they don't go their own way. They are not rebellious like men, no. They do God's commandments. Now he said what? Hearkening unto the voice of his word. We are going to look deep into the understanding of this. He said they are hearkening. That means they are listening. 
reason and for the voice of his word. If he had said they are hearkening unto his word, it could have been literally God speaks the God, but now the voice of his word is another dimension. Hearkening to the voice of his word is something that we are going to look into and I'm trusting God that by the time this episode is over, you'll be able to go away with this understanding that giving voice to the word of God is a different thing altogether. And now look at this. At a particular time in my life, I had been in the place of prayer because of the numerous things about my destiny that I was trying to find out from the Lord. And it was an eve to my birthday and I had an encounter for the first time where I saw angels. Now, before that time, I didn't understand what the ministry of angels is all about. I know that the angels of the Lord keep charge over them. You know, they are just there to protect and you know, to do some things. I didn't really know the depth of what it means. Because when you have this knowledge of the word of God, you know the knowledge of who God is. And you combine it with the knowledge of the ministry of angels. I tell you that this generation will not recover from what you will do. The power of knowing God. Hallelujah. He said, those that know their God, they shall be, they strong. Shall be what? Strong. And they will do what? Do exploits. They will do exploits. Thank you. It takes that knowledge of who God is, the knowledge of who you are, and then another thing we are handling today, the knowledge of the ministry of angels. Hallelujah. In that encounter, I saw myself. In the midst of angels all around me, they were, I can't count them. It was as if I was in the midst of a crowd. All of them were angels. And they were just, if I go like this, they'll follow me. If I go like this, I don't know what to do with them. And I saw the leader. They have a troop. Every troop have a leader. And their leader was dressed differently with a robe, you know, that is a different color like this. And then I looked at that angel. He looked at me and said, Joy, we are your angels. But you don't know what we do. He said, the ignorance of you, you are ignorant of our ministry. Mm -hmm. It is limiting what we do in your life. I tell you, that is a one-time encounter. I've never recovered from that encounter. That angel told me, he said, when you pray, you empower us to go into action oh, on your yeah. behalf. But when you don't know, you pray a mess, we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. This scripture became alive. It came alive. It became real to me. When he said the angels are excelling in strength, he also said they are hearkening to the voice of the word. You are the one that will give voice to the word of God. That is why it is powerful. When you know what God says and you begin to declare it, angels go into action. When you don't know your God, you don't know how to handle the situations, and then what happens? The angels are handicapped. I saw those angels. They told me, say, see, we are your angels, Joy. They were all full. If I go like this, they'll follow me. And they were all smiling at me. They folded their wings. They were looking so beautiful. That was my first time of seeing angels, I tell you. And there is something dramatic that happened in that encounter. I have finished my study in my table and I slept off. And by the time I finished that encounter, they gave me so much instruction about my life. I had the details. I saw the patterns. I saw my destiny. I saw how it was programmed. And they were explaining things. And there were so many things they explained that when I came out from that encounter there are some things I couldn't even remember it was as if they were deleted from my mind but there are basic things that were there until today they are still there but you know what happened over these years I see myself sometimes some things will happen and then the understanding of what I was told some years ago we say oh this is like the picture I have seen before it was one of the pictures they showed me in that revelation I tell you something when we lack the knowledge of what God has in store for us we are limited. Our plan and our purpose, our intention and our desire in this day as we are rounding up the power of knowing God is that you will begin to understand that when you have fully understood that God has a plan for you, you will go for that plan. Mm -hmm. You will go for it. You will discover it. Mm -hmm. That is why he told us in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he said, Call upon me. And I will do what? I will answer you. And then I will do what? I'll show you 
you greater mighty things. There are great things God wants to show you. There are mighty things God wants to show you. He, because you don't know those things that you are walking like mere man. I pray for you, you will not die like a mere man. I pray for you, your life will not be like a mere man. You will be a wonder. People will look at you and say, what kind of demonstration is this? We are the ones that just, our, our, our movement is like the Bible describing Jesus himself said, he that is born of the spirit is like the wind. The wind blows, you can, you can feel it, you don't know where it's coming from. The Bible says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Oh, Our yeah. oppressions are mysterious. Oh. You can't explain us. Oh. Why? Because we are not mere men. Mm. But the knowledge of these things we lack mm. is making us work as if oh. we are mere men. Oh. You look at unbelievers, there should be a clear distinction between you and the unbelievers. Oh. You know, some things that we look at Christians and you are looking at, ah, what is this different? The difference is that this one is speaking in tongues and goes to activities in church. This one, uh, there's no much difference. We are the ones that demonstrate God. Yes. The Bible told us in the book of Romans chapter 8 that the whole creation is oh, waiting, oh. groaning, oh. traveling together until Hallelujah. now. What are they waiting for? I tell you what they are waiting for for you and I to manifest. He's waiting for the manifestation yes. of the sons of God, oh. of the children of yes. God. He's waiting for our manifestation. What do we mean by manifestation? He's walking in a realm that is beyond what we have been walking. He's walking in a dimension. I'm telling you Macabo, Sikata, I'm talking about the word God is waiting for you and I to understand. You know what? That encounter, I've never ever recovered from that encounter. And by the time they finish on giving me the download, they say, this is how we walk as angels. This is how we walk as angels. When you understand the word of God and when you begin to speak that word of God, we, your angels, enter into action. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Some time ago, as a little girl, I heard the, 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 uh, one, 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 a great man of God in my country, Nigeria, back then, in Moabai, I went, my father, he used to carry us to the crusades. It was in a crusade that was uh, taking place in a park. That night, there were lightnings everywhere and the crusade was going on and, and there were ministry, there were healings everywhere. The cripples are walking, they are bringing the clutches and they had that man of God. I don't know if I was seven or eight years old when then, but I heard the man of God say something. It has never left my mind. He said, that was Reverend uh, in Moabai, he said something, he said that God just told him that he has increased the number of his angels. Amen. That thing kept me wondering, what does that mean? That God increased the number of angels. What has it got to do? It was when I had that encounter, when the angel began to explain to me, and I began to look into the word of God, I saw that it was what the word of God said. He said, the angels are listening to hear the voice of the word of God. Let me tell you, the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Settled. It can never be improved never. upon. It is what it is. Yeah. It is we that was understand the word of God and give voice to that yeah. word. When we give voice to the word of God, the angels go into action. Hallelujah. When you pray a mess, they don't walk. Do you know why? They cannot go outside of the word of God. They must hearken to the voice of the word of God. You are the one that will give voice to that word. Yeah. That is why we talk in authority. Do you know when Elijah stood and said, according to my word, mm. there will be no rain, there will be no dew. That was brutal. He could have allowed only rain and then permitted dew. He said there will be no dew. There will be no rain. So everywhere was dry. When he spoke that word, angels moved into action to lock up the heavens. The man spoke. He had to speak. There are situations you speak, you stay. You don't keep quiet. You know what the word of God said and you speak it. You can't just tolerate. Sometimes you look at it and you are crying. You know, God, you are saying, God said, I've given you authority. I remember very clearly what back in it, Hagen of Blessed Memory said. He said that he was having a revelation with Jesus and in that revelation, Jesus was talking to him and suddenly a demon rose up and was there doing yakete yakete making noise and he couldn't hear Jesus anymore and he was expecting Jesus to cast out the devil and the Jesus didn't say anything he continued ministering he continued talking to him and he couldn't hear him because of the noise the demons were making you know what happened he was he was like what is happening a time came, he got angry, and then that demon, I don't know, he cast it, he, he commanded it to live so they can hear the Lord. But there is something yeah. Jesus told him. Jesus told him, if you had not handled that, I couldn't have done anything. Mm. He said, what? Lord Jesus, I was expecting. He said, no, 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 no. Can I tell you that that is the truth? Mm. If he doesn't know his right, if he's there expecting God, there are some things you are expecting God to do. And God said, I've given you power, power. over all the powers yes. of the enemy. When you speak Hallelujah. your words, angels are waiting mm. to go into mm. 
and begin to effect it. They get demons and buy them. Remember, when Jesus gives command, demons tremble at his presence. That is how they tremble at our presence. But when we don't know the word of God, they don't tremble. They actually argue. They actually try to tell you, do you know who you are? But we are the ones that don't have time to waste with the devil. Anywhere we see him, we cast him out. Anywhere he see, you know what he is? He is, he is, he is illegal. You know who he is? He is an unemployed cherub. You know who he is? He doesn't have any place. He is illegal. Anywhere we see him, we cast him out. We have that authority. We don't bias with the devil. We don't negotiate with the devil. We know who he is. He has been defeated and the power has been given to us. So by the time you locate the word of God, by the time you locate what the will of God is for you, and then you raise your voice in authority, and then you begin to speak. I repeat again that encounter I had with that madman. I was just 12 years old and by the time I began to understand that demons are supposed to flee at your presence. I grew up with this understanding that anywhere you see the work of the devil, you destroy. The Bible says in the book of First John chapter 3, for this reason, the son of God was made manifest that he may do what? You may destroy, destroy the works of darkness. of darkness. Hallelujah. There are works of darkness everywhere. Some of them are happening in your life. Some of them are in your family. Some of them have been displaying upon your children and your family. It is time for you to rise upon your feet and say, devil, no, no, no more. I give voice to the word of God. Oh, and as I give voice to the word of God, angels are listening. When they hear you say the wrong words, they don't move. I have seen mm. tremendous mm. things happen because yeah, I spoke them. And I wonder, wow, Lord, is it that simple? The Lord mm. said, no. When you speak, the Lord watches over his Lord, word. Haven't you heard it before? He watches over his word. Through the ministry of angels, God has spoken forever. His word is he settled in heaven. So. Anyone that locates the word of God, it will work for you. Amen. That is why the Bible says that God is not a respecter of men. If you locate the word of God, mm. the word of God works for you. It's mm. a principle that cannot be violated. Mm. He said he forever the word of God is settled in heaven. When you locate the word, you speak the word, and God is watching over it. God will now say, angels, I think they are making sense now. Yes. Then they are speaking according to my word, mm. and then they are empowered and let me tell you the beginning of that Psalm 103 verse 1 said praise the Lord you his angels that excel in strength these angels are powerful only one angel took 1850 150 1000 is it 185,000 soldiers in one day one angel slaughtered all the soldiers one one Imagine when you see you have angels. The mm. angels I saw were so many, and they told me they were my angels. Mm. I said, God, I need mm. to grow in my knowledge yes. of knowing you. Mm. There is no power of darkness on earth that can stop us. Mm. All of us have our angels, and their work is to hearken to the voice of God that we speak. And when we speak it, you know how, what happens? They go into action. In your life, you will begin to see a dimension. You begin to see a dimension. Mm. The word of God is not only spiritual. The Bible mentioned about the word of God. He said it is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper. The book of Hebrews. Sharper than any two. It is just sword. It pierces asunder. Hey, when you speak the word, it pierces asunder. Mm. Even to the dividing of the word, the soul oh, and the spirit. Yeah. The spirit is born again. The soul has some things God is still working on. The, when you speak that word, those things that are trying to hold your life, those habits, you fall in and you get it again. Come on, get the word and begin to speak. Tell them that I'm born again. I may be experiencing this, but that is not who I am. When you tell yourself, I am not an addict. I am not an addict to alcohol. I am not an addict to lie. You speak that word. The Bible says the word of God will pierce through into the dividing of the spirit and the soul. He will bring a clear demarcation so that you can stand for God and stand again. He says something again. It pierces to the ascending of the spirit and soul and the joints and the marrows. It can attend, it will affect your physical body. It can attend to you. He said your joints and your marrows. That means your physical body can receive life. The Bible says if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead what happens if he dwells in your body he that raised up Jesus from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body he can quicken your mortal body 
In case you are sick, I'm about to pray. In case the, the, they have given you a diagnosis. In case there is a medical situation, the power of God is flowing now. As I speak that word, you are going to take it literally. It will penetrate your physical body. It will penetrate your spirit. It will penetrate the physical body to your bloodstream. The Bible says to the joints, to the marrows, that is where blood is produced. Whether it is in the red blood cell or the white blood cell, whether it is in the vein, in the artery, down to the heart, maybe is a is a, is a, is a brain, in the is a migraine, is it a, a disease, is it a kidney disease, is it a liver disease, is it a blood disease? Maybe it is hereditary. I don't know the area it is, but I am empowered to speak the word over you right now. There is an anointing that is flowing right now, and this word is penetrating. If you are sick, begin to lay your hand in that place you have been sick and begin to declare by his stress I am healed as I am speaking angels are going forth the Lord told me those angels are there as you speak your word they will confirm the word as you believe it right now the word of God is locating you as the word of God is locating you healing is taking place this is the power of knowing God this is the power of knowledge this is the power of understanding that our God is the Lord of hosts He's the God that works with hey. angels. Hey. He hey. gives his hey. angels charge over you. Hey. I break every spell hey. of the enemy. Hey. I break the hold hey. of darkness. Hey. Every manifestation hey. of the hey. devil. Hey. Everything the enemy hey. has bound in your hey. life. Hey. Like I declare in the name of Jesus whatever the enemy has used to bind you in your physical body, in your mind, in your spirit, in your soul, anywhere and everywhere. We are the manifestation of the powers of darkness are there. The Bible says, For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest that he may destroy the works of darkness. Today I lift up my voice like a thunder. I declare the works of darkness are destroyed. I declare the works of darkness are destroyed. Every work of darkness manifesting in your family, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every work of darkness upon your children, they are destroyed in the name of Jesus. There is a family right now. Their family, their children are involved in all manner of things. They are drinking. They are involved in drugs. And your heart has been paining you as a parent. The Lord is releasing his power. He's breaking the hold of darkness. The Lord is intervening because of the faith of the parents. He's handling the children right now in the name of Jesus. For this reason, the Son of God was made manifest that he may destroy the works of darkness. Today, that work of darkness is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. That the declaration, as I said, it is going forth. When I say the angels, they told me, Joy, we are your angels. You have your angels. I pray God to give you an encounter for you to see angels. Yeah. I saw them, my God. Yeah. Our God is a good God. Oh. He wants us to come to the place where we know that we know yes. that we know yes. that our God is alive. Yes. He's alive. He walks mightily. Mighty. He does awesome things. Before we do the final prayer, Minister Eva, yes. you have a word. Right. Go ahead and drop it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so happy to have wow. you here, you know. <laughs> what a great message. Powerful. Hallelujah. Yes. Indeed, we have the power and authority. Yes, we as do. As children of God. We do. For the, throughout this week, Mommy has been speaking on mm. the power of knowing My God. My God. The Bible said, as she has been repeating and emphasizing throughout mm -hmm. this week, in Daniel chapter 11. Yes. Verse 32. Yes. He said, but the people. The people. Who know they are God uh -huh. shall be strong. My God. The Lord has made your faith stronger than your enemies. Yes. You just have to know who your God is. My God. The God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look, those young boys could do great exploits, as mm. the second part of the scripture says. Then they shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Carry the out. men of old, our mm. fathers, they carried out great hey. exploits because they knew their God. Yes. They knew that they are serving the God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. No, the Bible says in Genesis that we are created according to the likeness and the image of God. Mm. Therefore, we carry in us God. Hallelujah. And if our God is powerful, then so are we. Because the Bible says he has given us the authority, authority. the power to trample upon Come on, girl, say it. Mm. And we shall not by no means Ma come to harm. Yes. Those people were able to do great exploits. Hallelujah. Because they knew 
their God. Yes. Sadrach, Meshach, they knew their God. Yes. They said, King, we shall not bow. Mm. We are not going to. What is that situation confronting you? Tell that situation. Look it in the face and tell him you are not bowing because Mama. you have the backing of heaven. Hallelujah. Because you are serving a God who is not dead. Yes. A God who is the ancient of days. Hallelujah. Who is the same yesterday, mm. today, and, and forever. forever. That is the God who did it for Joseph. The God who did it for Daniel in the yes. den of the lions. Yes. The fourth man in the fiery furnace. Oh. He's the same God today. And in that power and in that knowledge, you, we should Jesus. walk on a prayer as Hallelujah. children of God and as ministers of God. Hallelujah. We can only do great exploits when we know our God. No, when we know the power we will. When Thank we tell in the presence of God, what is hindering you from exhibiting that power? Hallelujah. What is hindering you from demonstrating what God has placed in you? Whatever is keeping you, child of God, this morning, mm. I want to awaken that your senses. I want to cause a revival in your spirit this morning. I want to challenge you to stand up and know who your God is Hallelujah. so you can walk in that power that and is in it. that authority. That, is that you it. can go out there to do great exploits for the God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You, Take Lord. that word and go. Take it and begin to do exploits. We pray right now as you go forth, the Amen. Lord empowers you. Hallelujah. The Lord increases you. Amen. Fresh anointing is breaking upon Amen. you. Your businesses are blessed. Hallelujah. The work of your hands are blessed. Yes, in the name of Jesus, name whatever of Jesus. that has been your struggle before, today Amen. we declare that struggle is over. Amen. Go forth and represent God in Amen. your generation. In the name of Jesus, Amen. we curse every work of darkness in the land, every manipulator, Amen. every Amen. worker of iniquity, Amen. anyone Amen. representing Amen. altars Amen. of darkness, Amen. we command Command of order to catch fire in, in this land. We lift up the banner of the blood of Jesus in the land. We declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare the work of God is going forward in the name of Jesus. Go and come back with your testimonies in the name of Jesus. God bless you. This is activating power prayers. We are trusting God that your life can never remain the same again. God bless you in Jesus. If you are around Teshinungwa, Greater Accra Region, we want to invite you to church service by 9 p.m. 9 a.m. in the morning, and the Lord bless you Amen. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Malabosh.